Notice this statement made by SDA pastor Doug Batchelor regarding a shipwreck the Apostle Paul experienced during a storm 2,000 years ago. He said, I believe Paul's words echo to us living today as we near the shores of the promised land, especially during the stormy time before Christ returns. Unless we stay in the ship, we cannot be saved. The Lord wants us to stick together. The shipwreck of Paul is used by most, if not all, SDA leaders to convince the people to stay in the church. They all, admit, has fallen into apostasy, regardless of the fact that when apostasy begins, the Bible says the obedient must leave. Check out these verses when you get time, and especially 2 John chapter 1, verses 10 to 11, that says, If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. speed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. So if you stay in the church, you're in agreement with what they're doing. How, I ask, can these dear precious souls still in the SDA church possibly prepare for the coming of the Lord when they're doing the exact opposite of what he says his remnant people will do in Revelation chapter 14, verse 4, where it says, These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. The SDA leaders have no choice now but to preach this false theology in the very same way Rome has done for centuries, and the Pharisees did 2,000 years ago. They know the only way to keep them in the pews is to lie to them, because the truth as it is written in the Word cannot be preached, because it shines a light on their sins. And the few that are left in the pews that seek truth are going to leave, and they know it. But then this is to be expected in the prophesied Roman SDA church of today. In fact, Notice what Ellen White said about the remnant people leaving the SDA church here when you get time. Now notice what the Bible truly says about this shipwreck Paul experienced in its intended context. Check it out. It's in Acts chapter 27. Verse 31 says, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Well, the SDA leaders use this passage quite often, and especially since the 1980s when they changed their statement of faith so as to fall in line with all the other churches that are wandering after the beast in Rome. And I show the differences between the original Seventh-day Adventist statement of faith and their new one in this video. They use this warning of Paul in the book of Acts regarding staying in the ship in the hopes of slowing the prophesied exodus from the SDA church, claiming that as they go through the end time storms, the people must stay with the church to be saved. Only problem is, not only is that statement an echo of Vatican theology, I actually have quotes from the Vatican and the Seventh-day Adventist General Conference wherein they both declare in writing that you are only saved by staying in the church in this video. As prophesied, the Seventh-day Adventist church is no longer based on Christianity, nor is it favored of God as it was in the ninth hour. As of 1980, they officially became a completely different denomination, but they kept their original SDA name so as to deceive the brethren still in the church that refused to verify their new statement of faith against the written word of God that they have in their own hands. The true church is clearly defined in both scripture and spirit of prophecy as the remnant people that follow the Lord whithersoever he goeth. That means staying in an apostate church when the Lord clearly declared to come out of her, and this includes all of her daughters. Staying in such a church as this would mean spiritual death. Do you want proof? Notice this passage I have yet to see shared by SDA leaders in its original context when preaching their stay with the ship theology. Just go a little lower in Acts chapter 27 down to verses 42 to 44, and you'll see what I mean. It says, And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them would swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose, and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. As that ship was breaking up, on the last day of its voyage, all on board were told to escape to safety. Yet, 
as the SDA church has been breaking up in these end time storms for literally decades now, the leaders keep trying to get their people to stay with the ship as it sinks in the storm. The modern day SDA way of preaching is to avoid verses that confirm they twisted the truth. And this is not the first time the leaders did this. In fact, Doug Batchelor has done this before, as we see in this video I shared two years ago. In it, I share how Doug was asked why he has multiple 501c3 contracts with the second beast of Revelation in that video, wherein he is yoking unequally. Sadly, his response was worded the same way when he purposely left out a particular verse that confirmed his theological claims regarding the meaning of that passage was dead wrong. You know, I'm not surprised at all that the SDA leaders twist the word of God out of context this close to the end, and that it shows staying with the ship means certain death, as it has been falling apart in the storms for decades now. Worse yet, when peering into Paul's shipwreck with eyes that see, a more truthful explanation of the passage shows the SDA leaders are prophetically doing as expected when claiming their flock needed to stay in the pews, for in so doing will spiritually kill their flock to prevent their escape unto salvation, as those Roman soldiers wanted to do all along. But the mercy of God is still apparent, wherein the remnant has been granted a chance to escape. What's prophetically shocking here is, by convincing them to stay in an apostate church, they are killing the dear SDA people eternally, exactly as the Pharisees did unto their flock 2,000 years ago, and the Pope they send tied to has been doing for centuries. If you study this up with a true and obedient faith, you will see that the Word of God clearly shows that all the prisoners, including Paul himself, escaped that ship when the storm was tearing the ship apart on its last day. They all escaped to the land the Lord promised them 14 days prior, just as the obedient remnant of her seed that are daily escaping the sinking SDA ship are going to soon realize with their very own eyes when they come to the promised land of New Jerusalem. Thank you for watching. God bless.